In this video, I just wanted to run through really quick the sub panel that I installed in our single car garage. To begin, I sketched a one line diagram that I could show the inspector to discuss any questions I had. To determine the size or gauge of wiring you need, you need to first calculate the load on the panel. In this case, I was also limited by the existing 10 gauge Romex in the house already threw some of the drywall into the main panel. So 30 amps was around the max with the voltage drop for the distance. The inspector was happy with it before I purchased the 10 gauge THHN wire. I just had the inspector come over and he did the rough in inspection. Everything's looking pretty good. I'll point out a couple of the things he wanted fixed before the final inspection. And this is just what we did. Um, obviously there's different ways of doing it and different inspectors may have different things they want in your area. This is the sub panel. It's rated to 100 amps. It had to have a way of turning up off the power, the main power with one breaker at the sub panel. So you can see our main power is coming in here. This is 10 gauge stranded THHN wire. And we've got a ground neutral and two hots. The two hots are both going to this double pole 30 amp breaker. One thing to note about the double pole breaker here is it has to have what's called a hold down. So if I take these off, out of the way you can see that red tab. That red tab is the Siemens, which is the brand, uh, hold down. That was one thing the inspector wanted to see. So that makes it so you can't just pop this breaker out like you can with these ones. It's stuck in there. A couple other things here. This is the neutral bus. And on this, these are for my two circuits to 12 gauge wire. And this is the 10 gauge coming in. This is the 10 gauge ground coming up to a separate ground bar. Those are for the two circuits right here. And this is six gauge bare copper wire. And this six gauge bare copper wire is coming down through the bottom. And it's stapled roughly every 18 inches. And then it exits the building through a small hole there that I've caulked with silicone. Uh, one other thing the inspector wanted to see is on this conduit that comes into the building. It's a little over three feet. So he wants to see a strap somewhere on here to uh, the two by four supporting that conduit. A couple other things. So I've got my two circuits here. They're both on 15 amp breakers. These are the hots coming out and you can see they pass through whatever you call those. And then they're stapled right here. Pass through the two by four. One of them is going down to a an outlet and that's how I had it for the rough in inspection with the GFCI outlet on there. He wanted GFCIs. And then this one is going to a switch. And the light switch, you can see the ground. This is not hot by the way, it's not hooked up. And the neutral's in the back there. And that runs up to an outlet, which is gonna feed my shop lights, LED shop lights up there. So I'll have a switch on the LED shop lights. So that's the rough in inside. Now let's go outside and I'll show you some of the other things the inspector looked at today. This is that six gauge bare copper wire coming out. And this is the grounding rod. It's an eight foot grounding rod. I got most of it in by just using the cup and water trick, which you can see here. And then I had to pound the last couple feet in with a uh, sledgehammer. It wasn't too bad. Uh, one thing the inspector did not like is this clamp. He wanted to see what's called an acorn clamp, shown here. And so I will have to replace that. I left this just in case he wanted to see two grounding rods. He said one is fine for the shed. He would want to see two grounding rods if it was at the main panel. So I will end up just cutting that off. You wouldn't need a grounding rod if the sub panel was in the same building, but because this is a separate building, I needed to install this grounding rod. And there you can see the conduit coming out of the concrete. 
it's supposed to be 18 inches deep right here right where it comes out it's not quite 18 inches deep but it drops down to 18 inches deep pretty quickly the inspector was fine with that and there you can see runs through the trench and to the main house right there and so originally you can see where the uh, RV outlet was installed and that's the 10 gauge Romex 10 3 gauge Romex that I used that 10 3 Romex is running through the attic into the main panel in the house to a double pole 30 amp breaker and here's the connection when the inspector did the rough in, I didn't actually have these wire nutted up. I just did that. So I asked him if it was okay if I could make the connection in this uh, elbow. And he said that was fine. And so then I just went ahead and wired nutted those up. And the breaker is still off in the house. You want to make sure you have it stapled within, I think he said a foot, maybe it was 18 inches of that. This little stub out here. And I didn't want to do a junction box on the inside here because I may I have plans to convert this into a bathroom, this space at some point. So I didn't want to have to deal with a junction box plate or opening that needed to be accessible in case I want to put a shower or something here. And then this cable, this is the 10-3 Romex. So it's got three conductors plus the ground. And I just put it through the studs and stapled it up there. And it used to come out of that hole right there for the RV plug. So overall, I think the inspector liked what he saw. I think the key with uh, getting inspections is just putting your best foot forward, um, listening to them, and uh, working with them to make sure everything is safe and how they want to see it. All right, so the subpanel just passed the final electrical inspection, and I got the inspector's signature. Unfortunately, I didn't put a sticker on it. I really wanted to get a sticker. I did have to add a support onto the conduit here. Wanted that. And here's the light switch. Works. Tested that. Connected to some LED shop lights. Service disconnect labeled. Main. 30 amp, that's the double pull breaker, and that just shuts off everything, including the lights. And then we've got number one and two, I just labeled those, labeled them here on the directory, outlet, shop lights. Again, this should be a lock nut and a bushing, they're just out due to the pandemic, so the inspector kind of let that go because of the pandemic, so I just use this female fitting. Correct way to attach the grounding wire to the grounding rod with what he called an acorn connector. Check out my other videos if you want to see how to build the shed or install the garage door. 